how can we really deal with this gigantic debt issue that, that as you say, is, is strangling Africa? Yeah. Well, in, um, towards the year 2000, many of you may be involved, may have been, were involved in the campaign that we carried out throughout the world to urge G8 countries to cancel the debts of poor countries. And, and some of the reasons why we were saying that these debts should be canceled is because the principle that was given to these countries had been paid several times over. And we were asking, how many times, if you read me $10 and I pay you $50, how much more do you want from me <laughs> before you can feel that I have paid you a $10 back? <laughs> the truth of the matter is, the way these debts were restructured, Africa will never repay these debts. Generation after generation, mm -hmm. the first generation was Kenyatta. We are still paying the debts that Kenyatta borrowed. Mm -hmm. I am the, the daughter of Kenyatta. My children are still paying, and the, my, my grandchildren will pay. The issue of debt is that, now I think it is much easier now to explain to Americans and to the developed world. <laughs> <laughs> Because you have seen what banks will do <laughs> if they are not regulated. And so, and you have seen how the United States government has spent billions of dollars to bail out banks. Now, why did the government do that? Because it did not want the repercussions of failed banks. Because the American people, the citizens, would suffer greatly because of the failure of the banks. So the government came to bail out banks to protect the American citizens from the pain that they would otherwise go through. Now, we could have told you a long time ago <laughs> But if you don't control banks, <laughs> they can go, they can ask the principal and the interest, and they will keep compounding it until you can't pay. And in this country, what you have been doing is the bank will give you money, and if you say you don't have any money, they give you a card, and if the card is... is, uh, is uh, if you, if you overdraw too much money from that card, they give you another card <laughs> until you literally leave from mouth, from mouth, from heart to mouth. In Africa, no, have you ever heard of any bailout in Africa? <laughs> and why didn't the banks, why didn't the World Bank, for example, decide that because the principal has been paid several times over, it is not fear, it is not just to keep asking these countries to pay back the money and allow children to die because children don't, because hospitals have collapsed. There are no drugs. The school, we can't pay school fees, so children don't go to school. There is no infrastructure. We collapsed a long time ago as states. So what we do is we come and we borrow and we restructure. And whatever we do, we pay back. In fact, during that time when we were campaigning, it became very clear that a lot of what we are told is aid. Because sometimes we are told, oh, you pay the debt. But it is aid. You are given aid. And we use that aid to pay the debt. <laughs> so, so the aid became trade rather than assistance. And at that time, during that campaign, it became clear that for every dollar that was being sent to these poor countries as aid, it was coming back 
as four dollars. Now, when will those people ever develop? They are indebted for life. They are literally slaves. And governments in the developed world kept saying, oh, we can't, we can't make any changes because these are banks, these are independent. Well, why did the government here intervene? Because it was their citizens. So we were telling our governments, for goodness sake, if you can't pay, just tell them you can't pay, finished. 